Welcome to part 59 of my videos using how to use Blender 2.7. In this video and the next few videos, I'll be showing you how to create a fairly photorealistic Lego person complete with materials and lighting and a facial texture set up that you can actually animate to make it look like the character is talking and acting. Let's go ahead and start off. Uh, in this first video, what I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to uh, actually model based off of a schematic image of a Lego person. We'll also be practicing modeling tools and techniques to get a very uh, good model uh, of a Lego person. We'll also be adding materials and I'll be showing you how to make materials that both have a color and a glossiness to them. We'll be setting up lighting and we'll be setting up depth of feel to make it look like our Lego person is actually quite small in this video. We'll get through modeling about half of the Lego character in this video and the next video we'll finish it off and in the following videos we'll work on a facial rig uh, that you can actually animate. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to go into my front orthographic view so I'll press 1 on my keyboard and then 5 on on my keyboard these are the numpad buttons on the right side of your keyboard if you do not have a numpad you can go down to view and then front and then view persp ortho that'll switch into orthographic which is straight on the first thing i'll do is i'll get rid of my default cube so i'll press x on my keyboard and click on delete now i want to add a background image into this viewport and another background image into the viewport when we're looking at the scene from the right hand side. Now I happen to have an image on my desktop. Uh, it's actually a PNG image, which is why you see a checkerboard here, which means it has transparency. Uh, that doesn't matter so much. What does matter is that I have both a front view and a side view of a Lego character that I actually made in a vector graphics program called Inkscape. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be giving you this image in the description area below. You can actually download it and follow along with this video exactly. So again, that download link is in the description area below. I'll go ahead and press escape and I'll go back into Blender. I want to load that image into my viewport. So I'm going to open up the side panel with the N key on my keyboard and I'm going to collapse all these areas and go down to the background images section. I'll check the checkbox and open it up. I'll click on add image and then I'll click on open. And on my desktop is this Lego Man Profiles 2 PNG image. And once I load it into here, it'll display in my viewport. Now, that's not the end of the story because the scaling is not quite right right now. And I might want to slide the background image around and change the opacity. What I need to do though, is I need to actually change the units and the scale of my scene to be more accurate. If I were to start modeling right now based on these images, it would be fine but we wouldn't be working in any particular scale. We know how big a Lego person is. In fact, that's why I have this, this little guide here with 8.5. That stands for 8.5 millimeters. So let's go ahead and change our scene up here in the properties window under the scene tab. I'll change my units to metric. And by default, each one of the squares on your grid depending on how far you're zoomed in, is one meter by one meter, which is approximately a yard if you're in the United States. Um, but I'm gonna change that from one, meaning one meter, to 0 0.001, actually maybe just 0 0.01. And what that will mean is that each one of these squares will now be equal to, I believe, 10 centimeters, um, but I'm not sure. I need to change not only the scale here, but under the display section, again, in that side uh, end panel, that same value 0.01, so under display, scale 0.01. And now, because I know that this head from here to here is 8.5 millimeters, and it's essentially a cylinder, I'm gonna go ahead and add that and we can scale the background around it. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a mesh cylinder, and I can go here under transform, and I can actually look at the dimensions. It is two centimeters tall. Um, I can actually click in there and type 8.5 millimeters and I'll press enter. And so now we can see that our scale isn't uh, very right for our background image. Um, I'm gonna press S and then shift Z on my keyboard. When you press S and then shift Z, you'll scale on the other axes, negating the Z axis. So now I can make it about the right um, aspect ratio, at least the right size. So as you can see, this background image is too big. I'll go back to my background images section and scroll down. This is where we can change those settings. What I'll actually do is 
change the x and the y values. Actually, I'll leave the y value alone, but I want to move this Lego person from my front view over to be in the middle of my scene. So I'm going to just kind of try clicking over until I get about right. I'll do it more precisely. Um, if I zoom in, you can see that at about 1.8 or 1.9, it's about right. But actually what I'm caring about more is the size now. I think it's about twice uh, too big. So I'll go down to maybe five. And if I now, you can see that changes the amount that I need there. Um, and let's say if I move that up and I zoom in, you can see that it's still a little bit too big. So I think the size of my background image needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's try 5.1 and that looks pretty good to me. Uh, that's of the background image and we can move that over a little bit. It's between 0 0.9 and 1. Let's try 0 0.95, not quite 0 0.9. Eight. No, 0 0.92. Let's try that. 0 0.93. Let's try that. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Again, there is some wiggle room here because the lines have some thickness here. Um, but it's looking pretty good to me. What I want to make sure now is that as I go through and model this, I'm going to be switching between the front view and right view with the one and three keys on my uh, keyboard. And so I only want this image to display in the front view. So I'll change my uh, all views to just front. So now if I switch and press three on my keyboard to go to my right view, you can see there's no more background image and that's okay because I'm gonna add the same image again, but then customize the, the positioning and the scaling again to match it from the side. So I'm gonna click on add image. You can add a different image for each of your views, uh, front, right, top, bottom, left, right, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm gonna open the same image again and the scaling is all off. What was the scaling that I used before? 5.1, I'll use the same scaling or same size, 5.1 centimeters. And that should be about right. Um, what did I do from the front? It's still too low. The head is still too low. And by the way, because I have the first image, the first background image rather set to front and the second one sent to all views, that means that it's going to overlap itself. So I'm going to set this one to right. So now from the right view, I want to move the image over so that it's matching from the side. And if I press one now, you can see it's working and then three. Uh, let's press uh, Z to go into wireframe mode and I got to adjust this value. It's between negative um, 1.7 and negative 1.6. So I'm going to try negative 1.68 and that looks pretty good to me. Let's try negative 1.67, 1 1.68, 1 okay so negative 1.68 is about as close as we're going to go. We could go six, seven, five, and that might even be even better. Okay, so we have everything in the right spots and the right scale. Let's go ahead and do some saving and then we'll make the head and the body and the hips um, section of the Lego character. So I'll go to file and save and I'll go to my desktop and I'm gonna call this Lego person. 001. And you'll see that as I go through these next few videos, um, I'll be saving and pressing this little plus to iterate through and make a few different versions so I can always go back if I make a mistake. Okay, we're all saved. Let's go ahead and make uh, the head be a little bit lower there. That looks good to me. Maybe I'll make it just a tiny bit taller in edit mode. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode and make the head just a little bit taller. I'm not gonna worry about being absolutely precise in terms of measurements from this point onwards. Uh, we're just going for pretty accurate and pretty photorealistic. Okay, so I have the top face selected of the Lego head. I'm going to now inset um, the top of the head in to make the smaller circle for the post to stick up. And I'll put a link um, in this video to all the videos that I mentioned up in the top right corner. Uh, the first one will be to the inset tool in this video series. So let's go ahead and I'll tap I to inset and I'll move my mouse inwards. Now I'm not sure how big that circle should be so I'll go back to the front view and I can't see this way either but I'll just tap E to extrude. And there is a video on that and I'll put a link to that video up in the top right corner of uh, the card as well. And so now 
Uh, it's the right height, but it's not quite the right um, radius or diameter across. So I'll press Control plus on my keyboard with this top face selected. Control plus will expand my selection. And now I can tap S and then Shift Z on my keyboard. S and then Shift Z will let me scale not on the Z axis. So I'm only scaling front and back and left and right. And so now that's the right size approximately. Again, we're not going for perfect. Um, measurements but fairly close. Let's go and do the same thing on the bottom again. So I'll select the bottom face. I'll tap uh, I to go inwards, that's inset faces. And I'll extrude downwards, E, and then straight down. And actually I got that, I think, fairly right. Um, of course I can press Control plus and then S and then Shift Z on my keyboard to scale that inwards a little bit or outwards depending on how far I want to go and it looks pretty good to me. So I've got the basic head shape, but now I want to bevel some of these edges because LEGO characters, of course, have some roundedness to them. And even if there's not very much of a rounded corner, we're still gonna make all the corners a little bit rounded. That'll help with photorealism uh, because in real life, no edges, especially on little plastic characters, are perfectly, have sharp edges like razor blades. So. We're gonna round everything out. But let's go ahead and do these two big rounded uh, edges first. So of course, I'll press A to deselect all. I'll hold Alt and right click. When I'm holding Alt and I right click on an edge that selects that edge loop. I'll hold Shift and Alt and select this edge loop as well. And now I'll go to my front view, add to bevel. And of course, I'll put a link to that beveling video in the top right card on my screen. I'll press Control B to bevel. In fact, before I bevel, I'll right click to undo that. I'm gonna go back into object mode with the tab key and apply the scale of this object. We've stretched it out quite a bit. And so if we bevel, it won't bevel at a nice 45 degree angle right now. So with the object selected in the object mode, I'll go to object, apply, scale. And that will ensure that when I bevel, it's at 45 degrees, so back into edit mode with the tab key. I'll press Control B now to bevel again. I'll move my mouse and then I can scroll up a few times. And how many times will we scroll? One, two, three, four, I think it was four, five, something like that, sure. I'm not too concerned about it because we will eventually apply the subsurf modifier to this head. Looks pretty good to me. Um, we're gonna bevel the smaller edges now. In fact, what I might do is let the top face, I'll press Z to go back into solid view. I'll bevel this one first because it is a little bit bigger. So Control B, I'll pull the mouse out and then scroll up a few times, maybe five times or so. Um, looks pretty good to me. Now, these smaller edges on the bottom and then where the creases are right there and right there, I'm gonna select them all at the same time. So I'll press A to deselect those. I'll hold Alt and right click on that edge. I can let go of Alt, of course, and hold Alt and Shift now and select that one. And I'll keep holding Shift and Alt and select that one as well. So I've got three edge loops selected. I'll press Control B and just a little tiny bit and I'll think I'll scroll uh, three or four times here just to get a nice rounded edge. Don't go crazy, don't go and scroll up 10 or 20 times. That will cause your computer to act slowly. So there we go. I think I have a pretty much finished Lego character head. Although if you go back into object mode and press smooth, it'll be smooth. That's under the uh, tool shelf, by the way, which you can press T to show or hide, or of course this little plus. Um, we'll also apply the subdivision surface modifier. So with it selected in object mode, I'll go to the wrench tab in the properties window and add modifier subdivision surface, and that will make it extra smooth just in case there was any jaggies left. And because we only had 32 segments um, around the head, this will make it much, much smoother, especially if we crank view up to two and render up to two. Okay, it's looking pretty good. What I might wanna do is also add some proximity loops because we're um, gonna be making the entire thing smooth. It's a good idea to add what are called proximity loops, uh, which you can do by pressing Control R, which will give you a loop cut. Control R is the keyboard shortcut for loop cut and slide. And I'll click right in the middle right here. Of course, you can move it around and put loop cuts wherever you want, but I'll put one right there. And then right click to put it right in the middle and then control B and I'll bevel it out. So we get a proximity loop. That means a loop there and a loop there right next to our rounded corners. That'll help uh, with some of the shading and UV and normals issues that we might encounter. I'll put one here as well. Control R to loop cut, click, and then I'll move it right about there and we should be pretty good. I might do one on the top just by insetting this top face. I 
um, put one right there so it's insetting a little bit to give us an extra edge loop. Same thing on the face. In fact, later on when we added a material to the face, we'll want to make sure that we have enough subdivisions to have different sections of the face kind of sectioned off for the face parts like the mouth and the uh, eyes and the eyebrows. So I'll press Control R. Um, I'll put a cut rate about uh, there, I think. Control R, I'll put a cut rate about uh, there. Maybe I'll hold Alt and Shift and move those both up uh, by Alt and Shift and right click, by the way, to select a edge loop. I'm gonna move those both up a little bit, just like that. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and press Tab. We are now done the head. Let's go ahead and make the body and then the hip uh, section. Um, I'm going to press Shift C. Shift C puts your 3D cursor back in the middle of your scene and it kind of zooms out. Uh, it's back in the middle now, right at 0, 0, 0. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a cube. Let's go ahead and press uh, S to scale that down. Um, now the body actually ends right there, at the bottom of the wider section. And then the um, hip section actually plugs into the bottom of the body section, but the body section does include um, this kind of box, squashed box section as well. So I'm going to put that right about there. Uh, I'll press tab to go into edit mode. Actually, no, I won't. I'll tap S and then X to make it as wide as I need it, right about there. I'll go into edit mode now, of course, with the tab key, grab that top face, go back to my front view and move it straight down. And now I can extrude it out. So, so with the top face selected, I'll tap E. I'll go up to about where the neck is. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, but not much because Lego pieces aren't totally uh, connected. And then I'll tap S and then X on my keyboard to narrow it down uh, to right about there. Looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and press Z on our keyboard to go into wireframe mode. It's looking pretty good. Now I want to round off corners, but I want to be careful because I want to round off actually most of the corners because again, uh, nothing in the real world, especially not little plastic people, are totally like razor sharp at the corners. So we're going to be beveling out everything. But first I want to actually make my Lego character the right thickness. So we can't forget about front and back um, right now. We could on the head because it's a cylinder so um, it's already right from the side but as you can see now from the right view my guy is too fat so I'll tap S and then Y and then move my and move my mouse uh, to make it um, not as deep and it looks pretty good to me we have squashed and stretched and modeled this body so I'm going to apply its scale object apply and scale and now I can bevel without worrying about having it not bevel up a nice 45 degrees so I'll select these two edges in edge select mode and then I go back to my front view and press Control B and I want to make sure that these edges basically that and that I'll undo that go right to where as soon as it gets flat so I'll press Control B and then right about there now I've already beveled um, two edges I'm gonna press uh, actually I'm not gonna use a keyboard shortcut I'll go to select and inverse and it will select all the other edges and oops I don't actually need to select um, that edge so I'm going to deselect those four edges these edges I do want to bevel out in fact I'm going to bevel um, I'll hold alt and shift and I'll select these ones as well because I want to bevel those ones too and we're looking pretty good so I'm going to bevel these ones out I'll press ctrl b and I'm just going to go a little bit here and I'll scroll up Maybe three or four times just so we don't have a perfectly sharp edge anywhere I think we're pretty much done the body of the character last thing we'll do and this is the most complicated part of any of the pieces that we modeled so far in this video is the uh, hip section and the reason why it's complicated is because if I look from the side of the character you can see that um, the top of the legs are rounded and that's actually how they swivel but in the middle of the hips in his crotch there is basically a cylinder that's attached to the hip section where the legs kind of plug into and so um, you'll actually see that this diagram is not totally correct and you'll see why in a minute let's go ahead and add the first um, block so I'll press shift a I'll add a mesh cube I'll tap S to scale that down to the right width approximately and then I'll press S and then Z to scale that down up and down I'll move it down and right about there and I'll zoom in so I'm not kind of intersecting the uh, top part that looks pretty good to me I'll go into edit mode I'll select that bottom face we'll pull it down 
uh, to read about there. Now again, there is a cylinder that's kind of intersecting into the middle and attached to this block that I currently have. So I'm actually going to add that separately. I'm going to go back into object mode with a tab key, of course. I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a cylinder and I'll rotate it 90 degrees. So I'll tap R and then 9 and then 0 and then I'll press enter. So R90 enter and then I'll press uh, S to scale that down, move it down. And then I'll go to my side view because I want to make it the exact same size as the top of the leg. So I'll tap S. I don't care how wide it is right now. In other words, the height of the cylinder or width. Uh, I care about the circle. So I'll make it right about like that. And I'll move it over just a tiny bit. Perfect. I need to scale it down side to side. So S and then X on my keyboard. And I'll move my mouse in and put it right about there. You'll notice this diagram is not correct because the cylinder keeps going down below that line in the picture. And that's just a problem with the picture that I made. Uh, it's not totally accurate. Um, although that kind of shows you where the cylinder meets the front of the legs, but it will stick down further. That's okay. I kind of worried about that after I made that picture. Um, so I have the cylinder and I have the block and I need to attach them, but actually I'm going to do one more thing first. If I actually look at a Lego person in real life, this block from the side actually has cutouts for the leg to actually swivel. The legs actually go into the block, which means that we have to cut out the kind of partial cylinder away from this block. Um, so it has room to rotate around and in fact it's way too much depth front and back, so I'll tap S and then Y and then scale it front and back. We can't forget to scale things front and back as well. That's why we can't just work from the front view. And S and Y, that's looking pretty good to me. So to make the kind of indent that goes all the way across the middle of this hip block is I'm just gonna actually duplicate the middle cylinder. So I'll, with it selected, I'll press Shift D on my keyboard, Shift D duplicates, then I'll right click, then I'll tap S and then X on my keyboard, S and then X will scale, of course, just side to side, and I go a little bit wider than the actual block, because we'll be using the Boolean modifier here. I don't actually want um, this cylinder to be the exact same size or have the exact same radius or diameter as this one, so I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to tap S, and then shift X to not scale on the X axis. Then I'm going to type 1.001 and I'll tap enter. And the reason why I typed 1.001 is just to make it ever so slightly bigger than the wider cylinder so that we don't have any problems when we try to join the two meshes up, uh, that one and that one, uh, those two after we cut away. Um, using the cylinder. So let's go ahead and select um, this block and we're going to use the boolean modifier. If you're not sure what the boolean modifier is, again, I'll put a link to that in the card in the top right corner of the screen. Um, we're going to use uh, this top block and go to the wrench tab and add the boolean modifier, which allows you to combine objects in different ways, including using one object to cut away from another object. So I'm going to name this object actually to make it easier to find. With it selected, I'll go to the object tab. I'm going to call it hips cut away and I'll press enter. Let's go ahead and select that hips block again and I'll go back to the wrench tab where that modifier is. It's looking for me to select that other object so I'll click in here and I'll select hips cut away and we're not going to use intersect, we're going to use a difference and that will cut away from this block uh, wherever the cylinder and the block are intersecting. By the way, the Boolean modifier is quite buggy in Blender, I've found recently. Um, so you might have to select not the right one, but just try going through and seeing uh, which one is the one that you actually want. And once you get the result that you're looking for, you can then press apply, which will make it permanent. I can now delete the cutaway object, so I'll select it and press X and delete. So now I have uh, the hips block with the cutaway. I'm going to join these two things together now. I'm going to name this object. I'll call it hips cylinder and I'll select this one. I'm going to use the boolean modifier again and this time we're going to use union. Again you might have to try different ones if it's not working the way you think it should. We're going to select the second objects as hips cylinder and that looks right to me so I'll click on um, apply. The reason why I made um, the cylinder 1.001 times as big is just so that um, it wouldn't exactly match the cutaway shape. It would be a little bit intersecting into the um, top block. That's why I did that. 
So let's select the block, apply the Boolean modifier, and now we can delete the original cylinder, uh, X and delete. So I think all we have to do for modeling in this video is make our rounded edges. Now, this one's gonna be quite tricky because we wanna have rounded edges, uh, but we don't wanna round or bevel all of the edges. And the fact that I have some edges now that go around kind of cylinders or partial cylinders, is I wanna have smooth turned on, but as you can see, when you have smooth turned on, it does not smooth nicely. So we're gonna have to do a few things to make sure everything works nicely. All right, let's go ahead and press flat uh, to go back to our flat shading again. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make some proximity loops around the sides of our block, just because we will run into some problems when we try to smooth out our object. And it's easier to make proximity loops now than after we bevel. So I'll press tap to go into edit mode. If I press control R now, you can see that the loop cut with control R does not go all the way around the shape anymore. That's because we have n-gons. N-gons are faces with more than four sides. So if I click and then click, you can see that uh, that new edge loop does not go all the way around. That's a problem because I do want to go all the way around to make some proximity loops kind of one uh, kind of right there but all the way around and one right there all the way around and same here and here. So I'm not going to use Control R. I undid that with Control Z of course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife tool and I'll put a link of course to the knife tool video in the top right corner of this video in that card. With a knife tool you might know it just by pressing K and then you can make new cuts around your mesh and of course when you make cuts it gives you edges. Of course I'll undo that. But what the knife tool actually lets you do is cut through your object at straight angles as well. There's quite a few options. It's quite a powerful tool. So I'm going to press K on my keyboard from the front orthographic view. K to bring up my knife tool. And as you can see down here, there are a lot of different options that are kind of in a funny place, but this is just sort of a cheat sheet for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap Z on my keyboard and that will enable cut through mode. So I'll tap Z and as you can see now cut through is turned on. If I tap Z again, it'll go off. I'm also going to tap C on my keyboard to enable angle constraint. It's off right now. If I tap C, it'll turn on. So now if I start off the edge and I just click on one side, you can see that it's now forcing me to angle constrain to I believe 45 degree angles. I'm going to go straight up through the hips kind of a little bit away from the side so right there and i'll press enter and now you'll see that i actually have basically a loop cut uh, using a different tool if i hold alt if i go into uh, actually edge select mode and hold alt and right click you can see that now uh, that's what that looks like i'm gonna go back to my front view i'll press a to deselect those i'll tap k for knife and then z and then c to enable cut through and angle constraint i'm gonna put one here as well so click and then click and then enter and so now I have another loop cut basically going straight up and down right through the hips. I'm not going to try to do the, the exact same thing on the other side though because I can use my symmetrize tool. Again I'll put a link to my symmetrize uh, tool video up, up in the top right corner of this video. So what I'll do is I'll press A a few times to select the entire mesh and symmetrize is very similar to the mirror modifier. It basically lets me copy one side of the mesh to the other side of the mesh, but it's inside of edit mode. So with everything selected, I'll press W to bring up my specials menu, and I'll go down to symmetrize. And I wanna make sure that we're going from negative X to a positive X. And actually it's positive X and negative X, uh, pardon me, because I made the cuts over here on the way that that red arrow was pointing. That's the positive X direction. So I'm gonna switch these around before I change anything. Positive X and negative X. And now I've got my loop cuts on both sides. Great, I think that pretty much does it for my proximity loops for now. What I'm gonna do is press A to deselect all, and I'll go back into solve view. I'll tap Z on my keyboard to do that. Let's go ahead and hold Alt, and I'll right click and start selecting my uh, edge loops and edges that I want to bevel. So I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift now, and start getting those edges, all the corner edges, um, like that and like that. I don't want to get any of the edges that are just in the middle of a face, uh, but I will want to get that one and that one and that one and that one. And I think that's all the ones that I want on the actual block, but I do want to get um, the ones that go around the edge of the circle as well, as well as the ones that go up here. And I think that looks pretty good to me. I will want to make some proximity loops inside the faces um, of the circles, but we'll do that right afterwards. So I'm going to press, actually, I'll go back into object mode. I have to apply, if I'm going to bevel, 
the scale. In fact, I'll do rotation and scale of uh, this whole object. I can go back into edit mode now and those same faces or edges that I had selected are still selected. Control B to bevel. In fact, um, it's not letting me bevel properly. It's looking good up here but it's not going into the cylinder as much as I want. It's not beveling nicely there. So I'm going to hold Alt and Shift again and deselect those two loops. And what I'll do is I'll select, um, just by holding Shift, these edges here and then these edges here. And I'll bevel those ones first and then I'll bevel these ones next. Um, what I want to avoid, i got to get those ones too, is I want to generally avoid beveling uh, connected edges at different times. Uh, so if we bevel these ones first and then the circle ones after, it won't be quite a, as good of a mesh, but it's not working the way I want it to right now. So Control B, and then I'll move that out, and then I'll scroll a few times and try to match the bevel on up here. So right about there looks good to me. How does that look? I never like how it bevels sort of... Um, in these sort of sections, and that's where we're going to run into problems, I think. But this is less than a millimeter in terms of the whole size of a Lego character, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and press A, and then Alt, and then I'll select that edge and hold Shift and Alt and that one too. Let's go ahead and bevel those ones. Uh, Control B. Oh, you know what? I think I have to go back and undo my beveling because I need to bevel um, these ones first and then the blocks ones after, unfortunately. So I'll press Control Z a few times and undo my beveling. So um, that will take me a little bit more time. So let's go ahead and press Alt and right click and get these two circles selected and beveled. Control B. No, it's not working. Let's see if I can go back into object mode and apply my scale again. Is that going to help? Oh, okay, so I have to actually make sure that I only have the edges that are on this section and not up in here um, selected. So I'm going to hold shift and deselect the ones that are up in this arch. They have to be um, selected separately and beveled separately than the ones that are sort of out on their own. Uh, it just doesn't work properly when you have those ones and these ones selected. So now I'll press Control B. Alright, so I paused the video and I played around with beveling um, basically that edge loop and that edge loop until I figured out what was the problem. There are a few things that are causing it not to bevel properly. If I press Control B right now, you can see that the bevel is only going in the circle and not sort of making that edge a nice 45 degree angle. Um, so right now we can't round it out very nicely. Um, the problem here, actually one of the problems is if I look and I deselect the inside, and I'm just going to do one, so I'll press A, and then I'll hold Alt and select this one. I'll do each side on its own for now. If I deselect by holding Shift all of these edges, it's still not working, and part of the reason why is it gives you a clue right there, um, and it's not being the same on the exact same other side, but um, right there is a little extra edge and that's caused by us typing in zero or 1.001 .001 earlier on um, our this cylinder is actually a little bit bigger in fact that much bigger on both sides than the inside hollow out uh, which gives us this little extra edge here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two vertices together so I'll select both of them and I'll press W and then merge or alt m and then merge and then i'll just do that center for all of them and that will give us a nice cleaner um, kind of edge loop so i'll go over here and select these two w um, merge at center i'm going to zoom out and go to the other side do the exact same thing so as you can see if there are, are extra little edges they could cause you problems and so it's very um, recommended to be very precise and quite picky about your modeling. W, merge at center. And then I'll go over here and then select those two. W, merge at center. Let's see if it works now. If I go into edge select mode and hold Alt and right click, um, you can see now that it's actually only going to where I want to. If I hold Shift and Alt and right click, it's doing the same thing over here. Let's go Shift and Alt and right click. And yeah, it's actually stopping at the right spot. Now that's nice. If I press Control B, you can see now, yes, it is beveling the way I want it to. It's actually going in and into the middle of the circle as well. Um, you can see that it's not doing a very nice job um, at that point, but we'll worry about that later. 
Um, let's actually try doing the entire circle and see what happens on both sides. Now that we have that little extra edge um, gone. Yeah, it actually will work okay, I think. So I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll scroll up a few times and put our bevel right about there. Great, let's go ahead and select the other edges that we already had before. So I'll hold Alt and Shift and we're gonna get all of the edges that aren't in um, the arch. So right there, right there, right there. I gotta make sure that I get that one and that one. And hold Shift and Alt. There we go, I think we're good on that side. Looks good to me. We're gonna bevel all these edges out now. So I gotta select that one as well. Just make sure I'm not missing any because if I do miss some and I save and quit and then come back in later, it's gonna be much harder for me to solve that later. Um, let's go ahead and press Control B and just go a little bit out and scroll up. Right about there, that's pretty good to me. If I go into object mode and press smooth now, you'll see that it's smoothing okay, but there are some normals issues. So what I'm gonna do is go back into edit mode. I'm just gonna select all of my kind of bigger flat areas, not including the bevels, and I'm gonna make those parts flat. Um, that's not the most ideal way of doing this. It would be more ideal if I actually made more proximity loops um, to solve those problems, but I think this is a good solution for this size of an object. So I've got all the flat sections just about now, and I think we're good, including that one and that one. I'll make those ones. Um, where is that smooth and flat button now? Well, it's actually under, when we're in edit mode, it's under the third tab, shading and UVs. I'll go to faces and flat. And so now if I go back into object mode, you can see that there's no um, errors sort of there. And um, our proximity loops are somewhat containing the, the normal errors around the edges. Although I might want to select um, that edge and move it over there and Alt and right click and so I'm gonna move it over there and there. I should have made those closer earlier on, but I didn't. And there, great. Okay, so we have our modeling finished, at least for this video. Let's go ahead and add some materials. If you're not familiar with the Cycles Render Engine, this will be a good review for you. Again, of course, I'll put my intro to nodes and materials and cycles up in the top right corner. Let's go ahead and make sure that our render engine is set to cycles, not the Blender render engine, but cycles is of course what we'll be using uh, in this whole video series. Let's go ahead and divide this window up. I'll grab this top little triangle area and drag it straight down. I'm gonna change this window into a node editor window. This is gonna allow us to actually make custom materials. I'm gonna select the Lego head and under the material tab, I'll click on new to make a new material. And as you can see, it's almost white by default, but we'll be using these nodes to customize it. I'm gonna click in this diffuse color box and I'll make it a nice kind of slightly orangey yellow. Now, if I go into rendered mode, you can see what it looks like. Our lighting is really bad. We'll set that up in just a minute, but we want it to be kind of glossy at the same time. So I'm gonna press shift A in this window and add a shader, it'll be a mix shader. I'll drag that into that noodle. We're gonna combine a diffuse material and a glossy material using this mix shader. So let's go ahead and press Shift A, and I'm gonna add a glossy shader right there. I'll click right there and attach these together. As you can see now, it looks a little bit glossy, but again, our lights are not set up at all, so it doesn't look very good yet. Um, I don't want the glossy to be perfectly white though, so I'm actually gonna find the hue um, of this color, the hue, if I go to HSV, that stands for hue saturation value, the hue is 0.139. I'm gonna copy that and then put it into this one. So hue, saturation value, hue, I'll type in that same value or hue. And then I can type the value of it. Actually, saturation needs to be up, but then value, no, saturation needs to be down. That's right, so it's the same hue, it's the same, um, kind of degree on the circle, but it's gonna be much less saturated, so we get a, a yellowy white. That's what I want. I'm gonna turn my roughness down to 0.1, that'll make it much more kind of mirrored, and then I'll change my factor in the mix shader to 0.2, um, and that'll give me a nice sort of mirroredness, but a little bit um, rough and mostly yellow. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for our other materials. In fact, what I'll do is I'm just gonna copy this material and then change the colors, and that'll be easy to do. So I'll select the body. Of course, I'm in rendered viewport shading, so I can't see what I have selected, but I know that I right-clicked on the body. I'm gonna select the same uh, yellow material. In fact, I'll name it yellow. I have got caps lock on, yellow. And the way I can make a copy is I can click on this little two. That's how many objects are using one, two, this material. I'll click on the two and that'll make a new copy. I'll type in red, cause I'm gonna make it red. So I'm gonna change the hue down to zero. I happen to know that zero is at the bottom here. So that's a red. I'll change this hue to zero as well. So now I've got uh, the diffuse is red and the glossy is just very light, light pink. Everything else is good. Let's go ahead and select the bottom uh, hips and I'll add the same red. I'll click on the two to make a copy and blue. And let's go ahead and make this a that sort of a hue right about there. I'll copy the hue and press enter. Click in there, paste, control V the hue. So now I've got the same kind of ratio but the same exact hue value. Let's go ahead and set up some lights and the camera to make it look like the object is very small and that will be using depth of field blurring. You could actually sell this object to make it not look like a 3D object or a big object by actually making the camera blur like you were taking a macro a photograph. So using macro photography, you get blur with a nice camera lens in front of and behind the object that you're focusing on. That will make it look like it's actually very small. So I'm gonna set up my lights first though. Um, I'm gonna go back into uh, material view so I can see the color still. I've got one lamp in this scene, but it's a point lamp and point lamps don't work very good in cycles. Uh, so I'll change this to an area lamp. We'll change rectangle to square. And I'm gonna make the size uh, five centimeters. Looks pretty good to me. I'll go to my top view and I can start to position the lights. We're gonna make a three point lighting setup here. This is my camera. So when you make a three point lighting setup, you want one brighter light. In fact, I'm gonna divide this window into two so I can I'll press T and N and T and N to get rid of those side panels. I'm gonna make one of the scenes look through the camera and I'll make one of the, the views um, rendered. So I'll press N and scroll up because I want to find the view section and lock camera to view. So now I can position my camera nicely right about there. And so now we're looking at our object. There's my first lamp, although we can't control the brightness yet until we click on use nodes under the lamp tab with the lamp selected. And now let me turn my strength of the lamp up to 500. And that's brighter now over here. I'll press N so you can lock, uncheck lock camera to view so I can zoom up now so you can see. Um, I'm gonna duplicate it to make a three point lighting setup. So I'll duplicate my lamp. I'll press Shift D, put it over here rotate it, put it right about there. How are the lights in terms of their height? That's okay. This lamp will be slightly less bright, so I'll turn it down to maybe 400, and maybe I'll turn this one up to 550. It's looking pretty good over here. Let's go ahead and make that third lamp in the three-point lighting setup. Shift D to duplicate the lamp. R to put it behind the character. B, I'll put it a little bit uh, behind the character there. Oops, I pressed T instead of R. And I'll make this one weaker. I'll make it 350. And so now I've got a nice kind of halo around the back of the character's head to separate the character from the background. Now to make it sell like it's an actual small object, we're gonna uh, add that depth of field blurring effect. So we're actually gonna define an object for the camera to uh, focus on. So I'm gonna actually add in the middle of the scene, I'll press Shift C in this window. Shift C will put that 3D cursor back in the middle of the scene. I'll press Shift A to bring up my add menu and I'm gonna add a empty object. I'll add a arrows empty. doesn't matter which empty you add. Uh, if you don't know what an empty is, that's what it is right there. It's basically a little cross object. I'm gonna put it at the front of my character um, so it knows where to focus. And I'm gonna select my camera and with the camera selected under the camera tab, I'm gonna to go to depth of field, that section there. I'll focus on the empty in the scene and now I need to set my camera to have uh, several blades. I'm gonna put eight blades, I think, actually. And I can change my aperture to have an f-stop of 1.8. But I think what I'd rather do in this case 
is to really control the amount of blur, I'm gonna change my radius um, to maybe three millimeters. And so now if I look at my character up close, you can see that the back of the character is not in focus, but the front of the character is. Uh, if I go to my camera tab and change my sampling, because right now it's only going up to uh, 32, if I change that up to just zero, it'll keep rendering out. You can see that the front of the character is in focus, but the back is not. I've probably got too much blur though, so I'll change my size of my radius to maybe two millimeters. And that way it won't blur in the background so much, but it will just a little bit. Maybe you can play, play around and type 1.5 and see what result. That's 1.5 millimeters, not centimeters. If you want to be really blurred, you can type in uh, 30 centimeters. And of course, it'll be way out of focus because nothing will be in focus. 1.5 millimeters. There we go. So that will be it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll continue modeling the arms and the hands and the legs, and then we'll get a finished Lego character and we'll control where each object rotates and we'll parent the objects up. And then in the videos after that, we'll make a custom setup for the, the decal, the character uh, face and the different eyes and mouths and eyebrow shapes. We'll get all that done in the next few videos. Please don't forget to like this video if you learned something. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this in Blender and in tech. Please don't forget to check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.